Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's premier home purchase lender. We've created a new way to protect you from unpredictable interest rates. Our exclusive Rate Shield approval. First, we lock your interest rate for up to 90 days. Then, if rates go up, your rate stays locked. But if rates go down, your rate drops. Either way, you win. Call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. Racial approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Since the fall of man, a war has raged between good and evil. Over the centuries, this war has distorted the truth. Now the truth is perceived as lies and lies acknowledged as truth. To this day, the battle continues as we investigate and debate the truth behind the history and mystery of the universe. We are Paratruth Radio. Monsters are mythical or live to dwell in the sea and often imagined to be of immense size. Marine monsters can take many forms, including sea dragons, sea serpents, or multi-armed beasts. They can be slimy or scaly, and are often pictured threatening ships or spouting jets of water. And now, Paratruth Lake Monsters. Hey everybody, welcome to Paratruth Radio right here at paratruthradio.com. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. As you guys have heard, today, monsters. So, you guys got the definition of what a sea monster is. Uh, We did some research on Champ, which is the Lake Champlain Monster in New York. And then we also did some research on the Loch Ness Monster, which is in Scotland. And sea monsters in general, really. So, getting into lake monsters first. uh, You know, most people have heard of Loch Ness Monster, Champ. Uh, If you have not heard of Champ, it's basically the American version of the Loch Ness Monster. Both of these creatures are descriptions. A elongated neck with um, almost like a dinosaur type appearance. Uh... Both have been caught on camera, supposedly, and these things have been around for a really long time. Yeah, I know for uh, Loch Ness Monster in particular, I did a lot of research on Loch Ness Monster, mostly because it's more intriguing to me than Champ is, even though, you know, we live in North America, Loch Ness, you know, Nessie has been around a lot more or a lot longer uh, than Champ has, and Things really started around 1960 uh, with Nessie. And from there on, it just exploded into, you know, a mass amount of people just claiming that they've seen this creature uh, from time to time. And for a while, it was very consistent. And when you look back at the records, uh, 1960 in particular, you're looking at May 24th, May 27th, then Ju- June 27th to July 23rd. Then the next sighting after the July 23rd of 1960 was August 7th of 1960. And then suddenly, oddly enough, there appears to be somewhat of a 14-year gap on November 10th. And then suddenly, yet again, there was about a six-year gap. And the next sighting was July 13th of 79. And then another 14-year gap between 79 and 93 before the next sighting. What's really interesting are these huge gaps. Now, does that mean someone, you know, people haven't seen it, that suddenly this creature just disappeared one day? Or are are we missing 
I guess, are we missing any claims by people, any eyewitness reports are, are missing from this particular document that I found or that people just aren't coming forth and saying some the, these sightings are fake. You know, the, these this monster wasn't real and possibly these people were just telling stories. So I'm really interested in wondering what happened in those sudden, you know, gaps of time where this creature was no longer in the newspaper. Yeah. And it seems like it's that way for champ as well, that it's there and cited a couple of times and then again, not reported for a little while. And then once again, there's several sightings and then once again, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Uh, Interestingly enough, it became so popular that 19th century put a reward of $50,000 up for a carcass of Champ, and Barnum wanted the carcass of Champ so that he could include it in his epic World's Fair show. Interesting. Now, to me, I mean, regardless of the gap, I mean, there's just so many sightings of these things that it's almost hard to discount them Mm -hmm. but it has been proven that both the Loch Ness Monster and Champ there have been hoax hoax pictures oh yeah posted Mm -hmm. I mean that there might be gaps is maybe these things are getting out to the oceans somehow because there are cave underwater caves in both Lake Champlain and Uh, Loch Ness Mm -hmm. so maybe these things are getting out into open water but you know aquatic creatures that we know of are kind of split between salt water and fresh water so that would kind of discredit the creature going into both that doesn't mean that it couldn't survive again uh, a shark known as the bull shark is capable of living in both freshwater and saltwater. And even though the saltwater, the ocean, is its primary home, it has been found nearly 100 miles upriver before in freshwater. Um, and they're extremely aggressive sharks. I mean, they kill just to kill. They, they have the highest testosterone of any creature on Earth. So, you know, it's literally a monster that's able to go from saltwater to freshwater, and you're really not safe. So with that alone, and that's a modern day creature, you know, obviously Nessie, Champ, the type of creatures that people claim they are. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't know what dinosaurs are capable of, you know, back then. But here's a modern day creature, this bull shark, who's capable of changing, you know, his habitat on a whim without any problem whatsoever. So I don't see why this particular creature, the uh, Nessie or Champ, couldn't do the same thing. Right. Well, and that kind of leads us to what is it that these things are? Yes, it's it's possible that these creatures, whatever they are, could be dinosaurs left over from the last ice age where they survived somehow. I don't would have ended up where they have is here in the U.S., one's in Scotland. And that's a huge, huge, huge area difference. Let me ask you something real quick. I'm sorry to cut you off real quick. No. In regards to the years of Champ, I didn't even think about this until just now. I should probably come. I want to compare the years of uh, the Champ sightings compared to the Nessie sightings. Okay. Because is there a possibility that this creature is one and the same? And those gap years are the years that traveled from one side of the world to the other side of the world, to two different lakes. That was one theory that I was thinking as well. So that's something we'll have to look up here uh, while we're going on with the show. And just we'll call, uh, in regards to this creature, yeah, you know, one of the, as we mentioned, dinosaurs, it's probably one of the most common possibilities is the plesiosaur, you know, which is it's an ocean dinosaur, an aquatic creature has four fins, a long neck, long tail, and a rather bulbous body. But I don't know exactly what type of skin or flesh it has, uh, that dinosaur, because I noticed that with some sightings, this creature has been said to have scales on its head, but have the rest of its body almost seal-like. It's almost like, I I see, when I think of seals, I think of like fur, almost short-haired. 
but type it, of aquatic creature. It does give the appearance of skin because they have oil on their fur. So right. Some of the some of the theories here are the plesiosaurus, uh, the balasaurus, a giant eel, mm-hmm. a, a pinniped, and then the tanistrophius was a very specialized species of aquatic reptile from the Triassic period. So. For the most part, most of these theories are pointing towards some type of prehistoric creature. Mm-hmm. The only reason that I would discount the giant eel is because they're saying it's more than just a neck. There be that a bulbous body, like you said, that comes out of the water sometimes. So the the only thing that these things could be, as far as I can see, some type of either dinosaur or an ancestor of the dinosaurs. But, I mean, what other theories have you come across? Have you seen anything else? No, not really. I mean, there there really aren't a ton of theories uh, when it comes down to it. It's just either a dinosaur of some sort, some creature that's never been discovered, or just a giant hoax altogether. I mean, besides other than uh, the eels, there I, I, I did come across something a few recently, a theory that maybe it was just dolphin or whales that had come in and which is really interesting because when you see dolphins or even whales swimming together they kind of line up behind each other or next to each other and as they're coming up out of the water to get air it almost looks like humps coming up out of the water right and that's what a lot of people are seeing with champ and nessie and the other sea or lake like creatures or monsters that have you know been claimed around the world is these humps and they're there for a little bit, but then suddenly disappear. But then again, there's times where people are saying it's, you know, it sat still for 15, 20 minutes straight. Other people think it could just. Yeah, that's it. I, I've heard logs or some type of plant life. I've also seen a video once on Champ where it was this creature was popping its head out of the water and it was two eyes, a nose and you could see what looked like whiskers or okay. the, the holes of whiskers where like it almost looked like a seal's face. But mm-hmm. when it dived back under, it had a, how do you say it? A three, like a trident tail sort of. Okay. And what they were speculating might has a seal made its tail and hmm. had caused that, that trident effect in its tail. Mm-hmm. But not all accounts of champ say there was a trident tail it's just this one video where they had caught whatever it was swimming in the water right now going into the the christian side of it and the biblical side of it Mm -hmm. i mean there is accounts of sea monsters in the bible right uh yeah there's there are accounts of sea monsters uh the most popular is that of the Leviathan and the Leviathan? Uh, there's a lot of debate to whether in the scriptures Leviathan is written metaphorically, you know, symbolically or literal. And the first time Leviathan shows up is in the book of Job, when God Himself is speaking to Job and brings up Leviathan. And God speaks of the Leviathan as being an actual living, breathing creature that lives in the ocean, almost dragon-like, if you will. And it, uh, that's in Job chapter 41. It's pretty, pretty extensive uh, verse. But if I mean, we had a time, I could read it real quick and people can kind of, you know, just hear what, what God had talked about with this Leviathan. It's similar even today. Go ahead and share it. I think people would <clears throat> want to know. OK, so this is uh, from the New International Version of the, of the Holy Bible, the book of Job chapter 41. Can you pull in Leviathan with a fish hook? Or tie down its tongue with a rope? Can you put a cord through its nose or pierce its jaw with a hook? Will it keep begging you for mercy? Will it speak to you with gentle words? Will it make an agreement with you for you to take it as your slave for life? Can you make a pet of it like a bird or put it on a leash for the young women in your house? Will traders barter for it? Will they divide it up among the merchants, coons or its head with fit? If you lay a hand on it, you will remember the struggle and never do it again. Any hope of doing it, it is false. The mere sight of it is overpowering. No one is fierce enough to rouse it. 
Who then is able to stand against me? Who has a claim against me that I must pay? Everything under heaven belongs to me. That last part is God comparing himself. I will not fail to speak of Leviathan's limbs, its strength and its graceful form. Who can strip off its outer coat? Who can penetrate its double coat of armor? Who dares open the doors of its mouth, ringed its back has together? Each is so close to the next that no air can pass between. They are joined fast to one another. They cling together and cannot be parted. Its snorting throws out flashes of light. Its eyes are like the rays of dawn. Flames stream from its mouth. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke pours from its nostrils. As from a boiling pot over burning reeds, its breath sets coals ablaze, and flames dart from its mouth. Strength resides in its neck. Dismay goes before it. The folds of its flesh are tightly joined. They are firm and immovable. Its chest is hard as rock. Hard as a low. When it rises up, they retreat before its thrashing. The sword that reaches it has no effect, nor does the spear or the dart or the javelin. Iron is like straw and bronze like rotten wood. Arrows do not make it flee. Sling stones are like chaff to it. A club seems to it, but a piece of straw. It laughs at the rattling of the lance. Its undersides are jagged pot shirts, leaving a trail in the mud like a threshing sledge. It makes the depths churn like a boiling cauldron and stirs up the sea like a pot of ointment. It leaves a glistening wake behind it. One would think the deep had white hair equal. It, cre- it looks down on all that are haughty. It is king over all that are proud. So that's the whole chapter of Job talking about the Leviathan. And you can see that there were moments throughout this passage, if you really took the moment to listen as I was talking, where God is speaking of this creature in both a literal and a figurative term uh, or a uh, format. So, you know, you, you really have to look at it and study a bit to really understand, you know, what's figurative here, what's literal, you know, or what could be, you know, which is which really. And it could be difficult at times. But some of the things that he had mentioned in regards to this particular sea monster, you know, the uh, the ocean, like often with sea monsters or even the lake monsters, when it comes to Nessie and some of the uh, reports that come in, they're saying that the water was churning uh, above it, wherever this creature was swimming underneath. They believe this creature, creature was swimming underneath. Right. And, and of course, this sea monster, not, not uh, the Leviathan, but, you know, Nessie or Champ, they're considered to be enormous creatures. I want to say I saw it came across one sighting that claimed it was around 40 feet long, which is pretty significant, you know? Yeah. I know a uh, great white shark at max, and it's even rare, but at max, a great white shark can only get to 20 feet long. So this creature is twice. All right, folks, I think break. Stay tuned for more sea monsters right after these commercials. This is Bill Hall, author of the book, The World's Most Haunted House, and you're listening to Paratruth Radio. Confessions of a Potentially Perfect Parent, brought to you by AdoptUsKids.org. I might look like an adult, like a person who could possibly be a parent, but I have no idea how to talk like one. And everyone knows that if you want to be a parent, you have to sound good when you say things like, don't make me turn this car around, or because I said so, or don't make me come back there. I don't even really know what those things mean, but I know that I actually believed my parents when they said them to me. How did they manage to sound so convincing? Make me come back there. Enough enough at all. Kids can sense weakness. Don't make me come back there. Ooh, yeah, that's better. In fact, that kind of sounded like my dad. Weird. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to listen to you practice your dad voice. Call 1-888-200-4005 or visit adoptuskids.org for more information. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt Us Kids, and the Ad Council. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by FeedThePig.org. Well, I finally did it. I opened a 401k. So you're giving up. Just like that. Giving up on what? On getting relative. Don't you family we'd know about it by now? Listen to me. We are one phone call away from riding horses on our own private polo grounds. One call from christening God. A butler using summer as a verb. How do you figure? Look, everyone's got a rich uncle somewhere. It's statistics. So the best thing you can do is just prepare for the inevitable. Right. Which is why I thought maybe it would be smart to take control of my finances. You know, start using a budget. Get out of debt. Set some retirement goals. Budgets? 
Debt? You watch your mouth. Retirement shouldn't be a goal for us. It should be a way of life. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Ad Council. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. It's in their recovery. George, protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke, F-A-S-T, fast. Life is why. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then. So what are we doing this week? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Okay, forest animals, today is a new day. Kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow. Yes? Have you practiced here? Of course. Catchy. I like it. Okay, river. Dude. How's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. Perfect for a little riverside shoeless relaxation. Ah, good. Owl, you here? Cool. Who's asking? I am. Look, you know the drill. Sleep during the day, scare the kids at night. Perfect. I love my job. Uh, oak tree? What's up? Still in the same place I left you last year. That's what I like. Consistency. Well, it's not like I'm going anywhere for the next couple hundred years. I know. I love it. Uh, turtle. Turtle. He's not here yet, man. Ugh, he's late every morning. You'd think he would have learned by now to leave the night before our meetings. Okay. Squirrel. Has anybody seen Mr. Mr. Squirrel? Squirrel? The forest has been preparing just for you today. To learn more about visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Hey, Dr. Phil here. I help people solve difficult and trying personal problems every day on my TV show. But there's one problem that's just got me stumped. Childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. That's one in five kids who may not know where their next meal is coming from, despite the fact that there's more than enough healthy, nutritious food out there to feed them all. Now, I don't know about you, but that is unacceptable to me. Luckily, the Feeding America network of good people is out there collecting cert, giving hope to hunt at local food banks all across the country. But let's face it, they can't do it without your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. This is David Montaigne, author of End Times in 2019, and you are listening to Paratruth Radio. All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And we've been talking about sea monsters, specifically Loch Ness Monster. And Eric read us about Leviathan. Now, to you, does Leviathan sound pretty close to what Champ and Loch Ness might be? Uh, no, I think the Leviathan is much different, okay. <laughs> much bigger, much stronger, uh, in literal terms anyway. I mean, here we're talking about Leviathan being able to breathe fire, you know, and has eyes, has eyes like fire and, you know, so on and so forth. And that's just something that we're not seeing with the Loch Ness Monster or Champ. Um, no one's claimed to see things out of the water or anything like that. 
but it's not to say that it isn't something of a similar nature per se. Um, you know, the fact that it's an aquatic beast in of itself is very similar. But beyond that, I think it's a completely different creature, much smaller, obviously much more uh, or less hostile, I should say, <laughs> because no one seemed to have any trouble with, you know, Champ or Nessie. Right. It's never attacked anyone before. It's always been, you know, offshore. I know there's been one case where someone had seen it on shore and it ran or tried to run, yeah. <laughs> you know, back into the water. But that's about it. It's never attacked. Weird struggles with it. It's just kind of here one moment and then gone the next. Now, the the champ and boxer have been around for quite a while. And like we were saying, the first account of Nessie official account was 1960, I believe, right? Yes. And then uh, there's also the official first report for Champ was 1609. Now, mm-hmm. does that mean that it ended up in papers or anything? No. They they didn't really have any publications at that time. But uh, in 1819, a Republican dated July 24th, 1819, titled Cape and Serpent on Lake Hampton. And it gives the account of a Captain Crumb sighting an enormous serp- serpentine monster. Now, the first media reported sighting came in 1883 when Sheriff Nathan H. Mooney claimed that he had seen a gigantic water serpent about 50 yards away from where he was on the shore. He claimed that he was so close that he could see round white spots inside its mouth and that the creature appeared to be about 25 to 30 feet in length. Mooney's sighting led to many with their own accounts. Mooney's story predated the public Loch Ness controversy by 50 years. Hmm. Now, that's not to say that there weren't accounts of sea serpents in Loch Ness. It's just this particular rendition of the story was reported. So it's hard to determine just because you and I have never seen either of these things Right, firsthand, what what they could be. I mean, they're unfortunately able to be hoaxed relatively easy, just because people can put things on in remote control, or like the the picture from 1934 of the Loch Ness monster was basically a cut out piece of paper basically that was made to float on the water Mm -hmm. so what do you think these things are and where do you where do you particularly think they're going in in the time gaps i mean personally i don't say this often but like i had most of the stuff we talk about especially when it comes (laughs) to cryptids but i actually just see my list uh, I really tru- truly do believe that simply because one, the ocean is so vast that these creatures, you know, they can easily just disappear if they wanted to, especially if they know their way around. And I mean, they were made for swimming that they, they move fast. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I think it's very possible that it does exist and whatever people are seeing, at least, you know, the legit claims, because you know, there's so many claims that are falsified, right. um, but the ones that are legit, I think they really did see something. And I think that it could, like I said, I think it could be a dinosaur, uh, especially, you know, I think a lot of people might think, well, dinosaurs were many years ago, you know, millions. Right. But, you know, it, it's starting to come to that millions of years doesn't really fit in the time anymore, but instead thousands of years would be much more accurate, especially when you bring in uh, a different t- different types of carbon dating that, that are starting to prove that the rock on the earth and fossils in particular on the earth are actually cutting those million of millions of years in half and sometimes by more than half. And we're thinking that seeing that dinosaurs might have lived maybe, you know, 60,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago tops. And also, according to scripture and some evidence that was found, you know, which country it was, but when, that humans and dinosaurs even lived together. You know, someone had come across fossils I had in a book of mine that I have of a human footprints, fossilized, fossilized human footprints alongside dinosaur footprints, uh, which would appear to be of a triceratops. 
and even the Bible talks about, you know, dinosaurs living. The Leviathan was just one. The behemoth is another, which God describes as a almost like a, a uh, I think it's a sauropod or a, a brachiosaur type of creature. So, yeah, I think it could exist. And in regard to the possible possibility that the creature in Lake Champlain and the creature in are the same exact creature. It's just moving from one point to another. And, you know, when you look at modern day sea creatures, uh, in particular, whales, sharks, dolphin, they all migrate. Each and every one of them migrate from one place to the other over a course of several years, back and forth, back and forth. And I think this creature is doing the exact same thing. And that's a very strong, there's a very strong possibility there, I think, that it's one and the same creature. Well, a lot of people would say, too, like, if it is the same creature, does it have such a lifespan? Like, is it reproducing only so often? And then, you know, eventually you see the kin of of the original Loch Ness monster mm-hmm. migrating what do you think I don't no I don't necessarily think it's the kin back in early I would say ancient times but when you look at the Bible when you look back to Genesis uh, in particular people were made to live forever for eternity and there's nothing to claim that animals of any type weren't to you know do the same it wasn't until Adam and Eve sinned, life became cut longer to live forever, but they were to eventually die. And it gradually dropped over the centuries, over the millennia, if you will, at times. But it's like you start off at several thousand years old, then a couple thousand, then a thousand, then 900, 800, 7, 6, 5, 4, until today, where now people are dying at like 70 years old. You know, that, that, that lifespan just... So if this dinosaur or this creature is of an is an ancient creature, it very well could possibly still have that ability to continue to exist. You know, in my personal opinion, obviously, I don't have any significant proof, but I think what's interesting is with the generations of people, each that age was cut until they started dying younger and younger and younger. If this creature is still living and it, who knows, you know, what generation of this creature it was, it could be super, super old. And since it's not, you know, there's no generation after it, those generations, you know, I think yeah. any other generations after that would start losing that lifespan. But this one's just one of the originals, if you will, and therefore has the ability to continue living until who knows when. That's a good point. One one throw out there for you guys too is maybe this thing is traveling from Lake Champlain to Loch Ness. Particular spots is its nesting ground. It lays its eggs at one place, leaves, goes back to Loch Ness, or goes back to Lake Champlain, whichever. And then the creatures that they see after that are are the offspring. But maybe it only has, like humans, only has one offspring per generation. Not to say that that's what's happening. Honestly, I am i honestly don't know, but that's a, a theory of mine. Theory two, along with our discussion with Justin Fall about uh, Bigfoot on the fourth watch, mm-hmm. when we were guests on there. It, what do you think of the possibility of these things being interdimensional creatures, kind of like we said, Bigfoot? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say it's not possible because obviously we, we've talked about this hundreds of times that spirits are very capable of manipulating certain situations and in particular their own bodies to create, you know, such creatures as this, you know, such as Bigfoot and such as the werewolf. The time, just my own ignorance talking, I don't see why a spiritual being or an interdimension to be something it's not would affect humanity in any way. Nessie's not quite like Bigfoot. I'm going to put it that way. Um, Bigfoot is super popular and people are hunting it like crazy. Nessie, yes, there's people out there, there's people still hunting for it, trying to find it, but by no way is it nearly as popular as Bigfoot. And like Bigfoot's taken thousands of people and have directed their attention directly to Bigfoot via television screens, uh, via radio stations, you know, via being on site 
there's been a couple of shows on television here and there. People go and hope to see it, but that's about it. So I'm going to say that it's not possible. It's kind of interdimensional being, as you put it, but I don't believe it is either, but it, I mean, it is a possibility that, you know, whether it's demonic in nature and it's just a smoke screen to keep us occupied for, for the coming of the antichrist or whatever, it's also a possibility that maybe there are other creatures, interdimensional creatures other than demons that can come or our particular dimension. I don't think that's the case with Nessie. With Bigfoot, I mean, Bigfoot's a little bit different. In the, it's a little bit easier to hoax as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Where the the lake monsters, it, it takes a lot to do a hoax of this magnitude Especially because, yes, there's a big span of area where Lake Champlain and Loch Ness are located from each other. So, Mm -hmm. I honestly would say that it's probably, like you said, it's probably a dinosaur creature. If it has the lifespan, as we're saying it is, I am how it would survive the ice age the flood i honestly don't know i can't tell you guys that well if i can well first and foremost with the flood god if you notice in the bible in the book of genesis starts at chapter six and goes from there in regards to everything that led up to the flood Uh and what god did to prepare for the flood god called on moses to gather the ark two of every kind of animal. But in the scriptures, you'll notice that those two of every kind of land animal. Because with the flood, God wasn't going to kill fish with water. <laughs> you know? Well, right. <laughs> um, so there are so many, I mean, I'm sure some died, depending on, you know, salt water and fresh water and what kind of water it was that God used for the flood. We, we know that we don't really know. I personally don't know because I haven't done much research on it where the waters actually came from. I know that the waters burst up through the ground. I knew it rained. You know, I think people have other theories that it was the oceans that, you know, oh, yeah. flooded. Was it the pole ching around and stuff yeah. like that? So, you know, possibilities, I guess so. But according to the scripture, it was very <laughs> how had the world flooded. And so like with the with those creatures, the, the sea creatures and whatnot, You didn't have to worry about those because they were going to live regardless. The ones that died were the ones that were happen to end up on land once all the water dried up, probably. So, yeah, I think it's very possible that this creature would have lived and could have lived through the flood. As for the Ice Age, we know the Ice Age was mainly the northern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere was never really covered in ice, uh, especially by the equator. and But whales, for example they live in some of the most frigid temperatures of water. Ice them all the time. They've learned to break through the ice. They, they easily swim and adapt underneath the water, you know, underneath the ice in the cold, frigid temperatures. It's very possible that even during the Ice Age, the ocean may not have frozen all the way through. You know, there might have been several miles of water for this creature to live. Now, the question is whether or not this creature was is clearly or specifically a air breathing creature mm-hmm. or can it breathe underwater? You know, we'll guild fish. No, that we don't have any. Right. We don't it doesn't we just really don't say. Yeah. Um, but even during the ice age, it could very possibly have a thinner layer of ice, depending on how thick the ice was, or was able to find a place where it could just hang out for a while, you know, and get its air when it needs and still be able to get plenty of food to eat. I think it's capable that it was very possible that it could have survived. All right, folks, we're taking our next break here. Stay tuned for Eric's Random Fact of the Day, as well as your paranormal headlines, and we'll be right back. Now, Eric's Random Fact of the Day. The death penalty has existed since the beginning of time. Depending on the crime that you committed, would determine as to what type of death you would suffer. In order to kill their father... The death penalty would consist of being sewn up in a sack along with a viper, a dog, and a rooster. This was 
And now, Parachute Radio's Paranormal Headlines. Hey, Parafans. Justin here with your Paranormal Headlines. These are articles from unexplainedmysteries.com. New dinosaur had a keen sense of smell. A doctoral student has identified a new species of meat-eating dinosaur with an extremely effective nose. University of Pennsylvania Key made the discovery after a fossil skull fragment he was examining turned out to be from a previously unknown species. A close relative of the Lossoraptor, the new dinosaur has been named Soronethalesis solivani and is thought to have possessed an extremely keen sense of smell, an advantage that would have made it a highly effective predator. This feature means that Soronethalesis solivani had a relatively better sense of smell than other Dromosaurid dinosaurs, including Velociraptor, Dromosaurus, and Bambaraptor, said Jasinski. While at roughly six feet in length, this prehistoric meat eater was not a particularly large dinosaur. It would have been quick and agile, a lot like its counterpart in the movie Jurassic Park. Its keen sense of smell would have also made it very difficult for its prey to escape undetected. NASA solves mystery of bright spots on Cirrus. New photographs have provided important new clues to help solve the riddle of the mystery bright spots. As NASA's Dawn spacecraft approached the enigmatic dwarf planet Cirrus, the largest object in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, One of the first things that caught people's attention was a mysterious bright spot inside a crater on its surface. Now at last, NASA has been able to determine that these peculiar features are actually the result of sunlight reflecting off of something highly reflective on the planet's surface. New images taken of Sirius have revealed that the two most prominent bright spots are actually made up of several smaller ones and that the whole surface appears to be littered with them. Dawn scientists can now conclude that the intense brightness of these spots is due to the reflection of sunlight by highly reflective material on the surface, possibly ice, said Christopher Russell, principal investigator for the Dawn mission. While there is still a lot of work to do to confirm that the reflective material is indeed ice, NASA scientists are hoping that that Dawn will provide the information they need over the coming months. And this has been Justin with your Paranormal Headlines. This was a segment of Parachute Radio's Paranormal Headlines. All right, welcome back to Paratruth Radio right here at paratruthradio.com as well as Spreaker.com. My name's Justin. And I'm Eric. And we've been talking about lake monsters and sea monsters in general. Uh, Some of the other creatures that uh, are considered lake monsters, actually there are a couple more coincidences here. There is Ogopogo in the Akinakan lake in british columbia canada i'm sorry if i mispronounced that i have no idea how that's pronounced um and then there is also the mokalili mokali mokili mbembe again i'm just guessing if that's what (laughs) how it's pronounced i apologize (laughs) um but uh, both of these creatures are supposedly water dwelling creatures the one the the mokili mbembe is actually in the congo river area in africa as well so it's very similar to what nessie and champ are but what they're showing the the rendering for um mokili mbembe it's actually it actually looks more like a it says it's a sauropod which means it can come out of the water it almost like yeah. a, a brontosaurus type creature 
right. or brachiosaurs. Where yeah, sauropods tend to spend a lot of time in the water back then, but they often would uh, come out of the water to eat from trees and whatnot. Yeah, so Agapogo, Loch Ness Monster, and Champ are a little bit different. They're they're being compared more to Plesiosaurus, or Agapogo is even being compared to Basilosaurus. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and I'd like to actually mention one more creature, uh, or one more similar creature, and this could this could actually go right along with what we've been talking about, the same possible creature that Nessie and the Champ are the, and Champ are the same. And this is a much lesser known name, but Bessie. Uh, you know Bessie, the Lake Erie monster. And, and like, personally for me, I never knew much about it growing up. Just recently have I really heard about it. It's not real popular amongst, you know, the big guys, Champ and Nessie. But the earliest sighting of the Bessie Lake Erie monster was actually 1793. So it actually goes back quite a ways as well, you know, right. similar to these other ones, which is very interesting, too. Now, what is even more interesting, I guess, is that if there was a creature, a sea creature or lake monster in Lake Erie, it would not be able to get to the ocean. Right. You know, it would be stuck there. So something being being able to live in there would be much different. Now, the last report of the Bessie Lake monster was 2004. So it's been over 10 years. Uh, and, and there's not been a single sighting. So who knows? It's possible something could have died. I don't know. But they even had a $5,000 reward, I believe, to capture it. And it even went up to $100,000 eventually. Yeah, I do remember reading about that as well. All of these coincidences around the world, even with the Bigfoot and Yeti sightings, I mean, this isn't coincidence, folks. I mean, these things are around. What they are, we don't know. Right. But... And for all we know, these could just be giant hoaxes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. You know, it's very possible this creature, the Bessie in Lake Erie. And now Lake Erie is is the lake by my and Justin, Justin and my uh, hometown. Yep. And, and, you know, what what was was it Champ that was was it 1609 or something like that? You said, right? 1609 is the the sighting that that is uh, as far as they can tell the earliest sighting. Right. So 1609, you know, that word travels, you know, whether it be paper or whatever, maybe people are like, oh, we have a giant lake here, too. Let's, let's what about Bessie, you know? And I'm sure word about Nessie came over, too, you know? Right. And that's why they went with Bessie, because like Nessie, Bessie, similar. OK, we'll choose that name. Who knows? Uh, I mean, we, we don't have any you know, legit facts here. Right. It's all based on research that we've come across. It's all based on uh, eyewitness accounts, very few photos, very, very few videos. And even those few photos and videos, you know, are pretty much scrap. They don't they don't tell us stuff. The surgeon's photo is probably the most common, most popular photo to emerge of Nessie. And that's the one, you know, when you type in Nessie, you find that photo right. everywhere, the black and white photo. But besides that, there isn't much to go off of. Right. Well, and like we said, I mean, these these could be hoaxes. But one thing that I have to say, too, is like Lake Champlain and Lake Erie are well enough apart. But it could be that this thing could travel in between waterways that intersect somewhere there, too. Like... It mm-hmm. could swim down down rivers and streams. Something that massive may be te- detected in the smaller bodies of water easier. Oh, but yeah. Or it, it, I mean, the migration period might not coincide with certain areas being as busy. Right. So, the I mean, I think we're both in agreement that these things are definitely some type of dinosaur type creature whether it's a a leftover dinosaur that somehow survived all these different catastrophes or if it's something that is just very similar to to 
the dinosaurs that we know of Mm -hmm. anyways and you know as you said even in even in the bible there's there's talk of leviathan and uh, behemoth and most people believe that behemoth is actually a, a dinosaur that lived alongside man and i i'm honestly a, a believer of that as well it mm-hmm. it's just history is in the eye of the beholder so some people say several million years some say just several thousand and we've been mankind has been around longer than history says they have i, I honestly believe so because there's just way too much evidence of that. Mm-hmm. Well, and on top of, you know, to, to, to stop it all off, even to this day, scientists, you know, fishermen in particular, the scientists are claiming that we're coming across creatures in the ocean that were thought to be extinct for millions of years, you know, according to world science. And yet these creatures are being found all of a sudden. So, that of which we believe doesn't exist very well still could live in our oceans today. Even Megalodon. Now, Megalodon is basically a monster great white shark. That's about, I think it's somewhere between 40 and 60 feet long at one point. It's massive, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think a six or seven foot uh, jaw span or something like that. Huge, huge. Yeah, I've seen the, I mean, they did come across a couple of fossils or remnants of of a jaw from megalodon and right like well if you look at these things in museums i mean it was massive it could swallow you in one bite right i mean and these teeth are six inches long on the megalodon and they're still finding them wash up on shore today now if the creature megalodon didn't exist for however millions of years what we're going to go with millions why would these fossils still be washed you know getting washed up the majority of things that go into the ocean eventually decay or are constantly being buried by new sediments you know new sand new dirt new mud so on and so forth right. and eventually disappears but somehow these fossilized teeth are still being washed up on shore so to me and this it's very scary to me because it's megalodon and megalodon is supposed to eat meat yeah (laughs) which makes it scary because we know what a great white shark is like megalodon's four times the size of it it's very possible that that creature lives as well just in very very dark depths of the ocean you know It, it may not be able to come up this high or you know to sea level if you will and breach the water simply because its own mass you know its own weight it might it might not be enough pressure to you know to to stabilize it i guess or something i don't know i don't even know what i'm saying but i'm just trying to (laughs) i'm I'm actually trying to think about it and rattle it off my mind as i'm talking because i'm trying to like i'm trying to make it make sense to me and it's not (laughs) but there's a possibility that all of these extinct creatures could still exist somewhere in the oceans or on land. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's always a possibility. There's, there's a lot of creatures, as you said, that are supposedly extinct that they're finding now. I mean, they thought that the Tasmanian tiger was extinct, but they're seeing evidence that it's actually still around or Mm -hmm. somehow survived didn't get detected until recently where we're finding them again Mm -hmm. Um, same thing for several sea sea creatures that they thought to believe to be extinct so right so i i honestly believe that these things are definitely around and that it's a possibility that it is a dinosaur that somehow survived that maybe they don't have all the facts. Maybe they don't know that maybe some of the dinosaurs did survive. N- nobody really has those facts right now, but I mean, there have been reports of dinosaur like creatures that are still in Africa as well. 
Mm-hmm. Now, is that just tribal folklore? It's a possibility, but the jungles in Africa are so dense. I think Who that's knows? all for us tonight, folks. You have been listening to Paratruth Radio right here at paratruthradio.com as well as spreaker.com. And uh, next week we'll be talking about the Antichrist. Now, bear with me, folks. I know it's not a cryptid. I know it's not necessarily paranormal, but we do talk about Christian aspects of things here on Paratruth Radio as well. And it's kind of a scary thing when you think about it. But we will get into more of that next week. So, Well, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and just pass out a little bit of information. This is right at the end of the show here. Uh, For those of you who enjoyed the show and want to hear more, check us out at paratruthradio.com. Under Listen Live, you will find a tab where you can select a number of different archived shows uh, over the past, what's it been, nine months? Something like that? (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) Something like that, uh, that you can check out. Uh, There's been one for pretty much every single week. So tune in there. Listen to some archive shows. Let us know what you think. Uh, You can email us at paratruthradio at gmail.com. If you have any questions on anything that we've covered or you have, you know, some general questions of your own or perhaps you want to even chime us in on a particular topic that you would like us to talk about feel free to email us. Again, that's paratruthradio at gmail.com. And finally, facebook.com forward slash paratruth radio. You will find all the information about upcoming shows, past shows, current shows, et cetera, et cetera, on our Facebook page. So check it out. Facebook.com forward slash paratruth radio. Like it, share it with friends and family and tune in every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do also have to say that we are also on Spreaker.com as well as YouTube right now. You can find all of our archives there as well. And hopefully elsewhere coming soon. So also we do have to point out too that you can click on our guest appearances tab at puretruthradio.com where we have been on other people's shows. Right now the only show up there is the fourth watch episode which is titled pair truth urban legends uh we do have other appearances coming up so stay tuned for that as well indeed all right folks that's about it for us tonight and uh we hope to talk to you guys next week same time same place my name is justin and i'm eric we'll talk to you guys next week peace I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's premier home purchase lender. We've created a new way to protect you from unpredictable interest rates. Our exclusive Rate Shield approval. First, we lock your interest rate for up to 90 days. Then, if rates go up, your rate stays locked. But if rates go down, your rate drops. Either way, you win. Call us today at 800 Quicken or go to rocketmortgage.com. Rate Shield approval only valid on certain 30 year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's premier home purchase lender. We've created a new way to protect you from unpredictable interest rates. Our exclusive Rate Shield approval. First, we lock your interest rate for up to 90 days. Then, if rates go up, your rate stays locked. But if rates go down, your rate drops. Either way, you win. Call us today at 800 Quicken or go to rocketmortgage.com. Racial approval only valid on certain 30 year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply.